Hello everybody, um, good morning or good afternoon depending on where you are in the world and welcome to today's webinar. Um, our topic today is the current state of procurement and we will be focusing on five key priorities for success in procurement in 2018. Um, we'll aim to, to just keep you for 30 minutes um, and we'll try not to go over. Um, if anybody is trying to dial in uh, using a landline phone, um, you, the numbers that you can use from the various regions are available on screen now. Otherwise, um, please go ahead and, and dial in using your computer audio. Um, so, as I said, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Michael Cullen, uh, VP of Marketing here at Softco. Um, I'll be your host for the next half an hour, and I'm tasked with the uh, with picking the brain of Garrett Pierce. So, uh, Garrett is a senior peer to pay consultant um, at Softco. He has 20 years experience in delivering uh, best practice finance process automation and solutions to large enterprises all over the world. Um, and is an expert in, in procurement technology, and um, specifically, which is form a large part of the, today's discussion. Uh, welcome, Garth. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so yeah, look. Um, with, without further ado, we, we'll, we'll crack on. Um, so uh, I guess just to, a couple of housekeeping uh, tasks before we get into the, the meat of the topic. Um, so what we'll cover first is the current state of procurement. So that's really trends and statistics as of as of today, as of February 2018. Um, and kind of the, the state of the procurement nation, if you will. Um, and then we'll move on to the key priorities. So, so what are best practice organizations focusing on in, in 2018? Um, and and what, what kind of areas are, are priorities for, for, for those leading organizations? Um, and then we'll um, have a questions and answers session um, where I guess you can pick our brain for yourselves if there's anything that you're working on in your organizations, any projects planned or, or any issues that you're facing that you feel we might be able to help with, please um, do ask any questions. You, you'll notice the uh, GoToWebinar panel on the right-hand side of your screen. That can be collapsed if, if it's getting in the way of the slide, but just at the bottom of that, you, you do have a pane there where you, can, uh, where you can ask questions, and we'll check those as we go through. If we don't see them as we go through, we will address them at the end, so please feel free to ask questions. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into it. So um, as I said, the, the first thing we'll look at it are some trends that are, are defining procurement and particularly particularly kind of procurement technology um, uh, as we stand today. So the first uh, the first thing we'll look at is um, is B two B purchases being made online. Um, so this is is data that shows you know a comparative um, a view of B two B purchases versus B two C purchases being made online, and obviously. With, with e-commerce kind of growing and, and, and services like Amazon taking over from bricks and mortar retail and B2C, we're seeing an increase in B2C purchase online, but we're seeing a stagnation in in, um, in B2B. Uh, if we see on the right-hand side in the dark, maybe the B2B processes are seem to be stagnating. Um, so what do you think this is due to, Gareth, in, in your opinion? Yeah, Mike, it's, um, it's an interesting stat. It's not one you would have expected to, to show that decline year on year of the uh, Business to business to business purchases, but I think it comes back to when you look at consumer spend. It's very easy. It's very unstructured. I can literally just go on to Amazon, look at my credit card, make the spend, and it will arrive in the mail. And there we go. That's the transaction done. Whereas obviously in the, in the business environment, you have to take into account a lot more things. Your your internal business systems, what exactly you're buying for, who you're buying mm -hmm. from, having that established relationship, having the uh, technological links between your, your system that you're buying on behalf of, let's say, your internal systems and the suppliers that you're buying to. So there's a, a bridge that's missing in the middle between the, between businesses still. From a, I think primarily from a technological point of view and process point of view to allow allow procurement users and their, and their users within their business to take advantage of what's on, uh, available online to purchase for their businesses, to, to marry that up with their internal systems and sure. internal processes. Is that extra complexity in the business environment in terms of buying online and right exactly yeah. yeah and uh, the it's there's been a it's been slower to catch up the business sure. world has been slower to catch up to sure. take advantage of all that can be done online sure okay okay um moving on to to our next um trend i guess that we're seeing um in that uh i suppose this relates to how organizations send the majority of their purchase orders um from the procurement perspective and, and where e-procurement or where you know automated procurement technology is not being used, we're seeing still a large number, 71% of, of organizations that are sending POs manually via email. Um, 
and you know obviously in some cases then even still you know placing orders over the phone um so what what is the implication of this for for procurement departments and for organizations more generally yeah i think i think it's it shows that there's still again it harkens back to that previous slide that there's still that bit in the middle of miss, missing that they they can send the POs often in a, a pdf or something to their suppliers but it's not it's uh, it's indicative of a, a missing link between the the customer system and the supplier system and it tends to be a symptom of it is you'll find that behind the, the process is a, there's a lack of control and visibility on the, the, the procurement company side as to what they're spending, who's spending it, and where they're spending it with. Sure. And then the ongoing relationship with the supplier is, is unstructured, even in, in the context of an order itself, that you're having to follow up with the order to confirm that they've got the order, that they can deliver the goods, when mm -hmm. they can deliver the goods. Mm -hmm as opposed to the more ideal scenarios that this is all happening seamlessly online yeah. in real time as much as possible that you're raising an order that's being approved that's going to your supplier who's then able to acknowledge it, confirm what they can deliver, mm. ideally even indicate when they're going to deliver it and then all of that interaction and subsequent queries or mm. confirmations all takes place online and, and using the technologies that are available out there but maybe your, your organization hasn't Okay. So it sounds like it's kind of a you know from an efficiency point of view, but also control and visibility really is the key thing, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That it's it's uh, it, it points to a, a lack of lack of visibility and control mm -hmm. from the, the procurement company side to where exactly the supplier is with their order and when they're going to arrive. And it could be in some cases there's already the, in the ERP world for their for their materials, their, their, their stuff they're going to be put on the shelves, are good for resale. Mm -hmm. They may have some of this in place, but for you. Certainly tend to see a trade around the edges of your, your non trade spend and your, sure. your non direct spend, but it's, it's, it's a significant gap there. Yeah, less less systems in place on the non trade side, less right. control, sure, exactly. sure, of course. Um, okay, and moving on then to, to another statistic, um, and and this is what I guess what organi organizations believe to be their top procurement challenges at the moment. Um, so, you know, we're, we're looking at things like obviously cost control and supplier, you know, negotiations. That's no surprise, obviously, that procurement would, would have that as a priority. Spend visibility is another thing. Ease of requisition and approval process. So it seems from looking at the top priorities there that, that we're seeing from um, procurement leaders um, that these might be reflective of, of the manual process, the lack of, you know, pr uh, pr automated processes and, and you know, sending deals by emails, all that kind of stuff. Would it be reflective of that? I think it is. Yeah, I think it comes back to that, that they're still getting uh, getting as much of your control up front to make sure you're only spending what you want to spend in a in a, a efficient a way as possible, getting visibility over that and making sure that it's going through the appropriate channels that your mm. your days of maverick spend are gone, that there's nothing is spent by your organization on the hand mm. of your organization without you as procurement at least being in control of the the, the, the checks and balances that are going sure. into that transaction, uh, and it's still unnerved many procurement managers that the thought that stuff is, is happening off. Yeah, unbeknownst to them, yeah, yeah. It, it, it shouldn't be happening. So um, there's still uh, a nervousness or a, an awareness that there's, that there's stuff happening that, that's not within their control, yeah, yeah, yeah. not within policy, etc. Only like, comes to light when an invoice lands in yeah, the AP exactly. environment. And it's way too late. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can't do anything about it at that stage. Exactly. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, okay, perfect. Well, look, um, I think that kind of gives us an idea from, you know, from the kind of procurement technology point of view as to where, where we stand at the moment. So I guess the, the next thing to jump into is, you know, what, what should a uh, procurement leader or, you know, somebody who's, who wants to show that initiative and, and start moving their procurement department forward and, and modernizing? What where should, where are the areas they should focus in? So we're going to look at some of those now. Um, the first priority um, we're looking at uh, is is uh, that of supplier interaction and data management. So if we look at the stats here in terms of the most valuable e-procurement technologies. Um, obviously, order management uh, remains a top priority, and, and that's something we'll, we'll deal with um, later in, in today's session. But um, I guess in terms of starting at the beginning of the process, we, we look at uh, supplier self-service portals and, and it's something that we've seen become more and more popular and has emerged as a, as a very valued tool amongst um, procurement organizations. So what, what would you say, why would you say those self-service portals are becoming so popular, Gary? Um, I think it's, uh, it lends itself to, to improving and automating a lot of the, the interactions. 
coming from the very start, as many uh, clients I speak with who, who struggle with even the onboarding of new suppliers, they, they find it slow, it's cumbersome, it's paper-based, it's frustrating for the people who are trying to procure mm. uh, stuff from these new suppliers. It can often mean the loss of a competitive advantage. So you, they're not able to quickly get to market with new products. That they've sure. managed, they may have sourced them, but they can't engage sure. in, a, in a proper way. Mm. Whereas once you have a, a, a portal uh, in place to allow you to transact and, and integrate with your suppliers, it, it opens up from the onboarding point of view, getting all the paperwork, all the checks and balances in place, the supplier yeah. gets approved, you've got all the supporting documents in place. You can make sure that you're complying with all the AML and that, anti money laundering and, and bribery and corruption checks. Your your various different departments, if it's a large organization, yeah. are confident that you have the information they require. So your yeah. compliance department knows that they've yeah. passed those checks. You have all that information in one place, because often the only challenge can be that it if these bits of information and documentation from suppliers ends up in different places. Right. The supplier portal can be a, mm. a route through which everything is mm. captured. Mm. And then once you get that right from the start, it leads you to you can start to manage your, your supplier data more more securely and efficiently, but whether it be master data changes like mm. payment information, bank account information, which right. we've seen some high priority cases in the in the paper lately of, of, yeah. of fraud taking place where that isn't controlled. Really. Yeah. With this, you can you can put the controls around it, yeah. and then on an ongoing transactional basis, you're you're, you're able to open up the online or give visibility of the orders they've submitted. You submitted to them, mm. they can confirm mm. you can see what they've confirmed. They can mm. submit their invoices and have visibility of the progress of their invoice. So it just leads to uh, starting to to tie up those gaps that were that we saw in that first slide that you mm. showed. Uh, that you're starting to 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 allow more. Business to business interaction take place across sure. a number of different avenues. Sure, yeah, there's a couple of interesting points there in terms of like obviously we've all heard stories of you know uh, attempted fraud or, or successful fraud even <laughs> where um, you know somebody submitted a, an email asking for bank details to be changed for a supplier or you know and there were no controls in place to, to get that you know done compliantly um, or you know an email sent to to make a payment uh, allegedly from a CEO but it didn't come from the CEO or whatever so putting controls around that but. And then, you know, you mentioned around, um, you know, tracking progress of an invoice and that. I mean, I'm sure maybe not so much from the procurement side, but the AP people would be very happy with something that allows a uh, supplier to, to track the, the status of an invoice without having to pick up the phone and, and bother them, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. win-win. It, it, cuts, it frees up your internal people's time to, to focus on what they're doing and it, and it gives your supplier confidence. Yeah. I mean, one thing can be frustrating that the flip side of um, being able to change bank data easily is now companies have put in place cumbersome processes to try and control that, but it, it tends to be very right. paper based, a lot of over checking, mm. whereas if they had a secure option in place that mm. the supplier could do it when they needed, they wouldn't get frustrated waiting for payment in a new bank account or by via the new method sure. because it can be done uh, efficiently and, and quickly. Yeah, yeah, no, that all makes sense. Um and then I guess, you know, moving on to, to priority number two, um, you know, once once you have your, I guess, your supplier portal in place, your, your supplier kind of management process in place, the next thing that obviously your procurement, part, uh, procurement department is going to look at is their purchasing process and, and how to, to be more efficient in that process. Um, we just see here some of the stats here according to Amex, 41% of senior finance leaders are now focusing their investment on increased administrative process efficiency. Um, and this is then re reflected in the, in the large increase in the number of organizations that you see on the right here. Um, that are opting for e-procurement solutions. So, you know, we've gone from 34% in, in 2016 to 52% in 2017 of, of those surveys. Um, so, you know, that's a, a dramatic increase in the space of a year, but I guess, you know, what I'd like to understand, Garrett, maybe is what exactly are organizations looking to achieve when implementing these kind of e-procurement solutions? Um, again, it comes back to trying to automate and make more efficient those interactions. So. From starting to catalog and pricing that you're, you're you're working off the latest pricing mm. that opens up the ability where you've got multiple catalogs from multiple suppliers you can start to do more real time comparative mm. uh, checks against what's an offer from your different suppliers where, where maybe they've got competing goods uh, you could you, you mentioned it there automating the requisition and the process putting through the appropriate checks from mm. a, a price and categorization point of view getting those orders and again. It, uh, maybe leveraging your, your your portal as a mean, one 
means of doing is getting that CO data to your supplier. And in some cases, it can be just taking advantage of more traditional things like EDI, getting it to the EDI mm-hmm. network, but, mm-hmm. and, and then getting that confirmation back so you have the confidence that it is going to be delivered when, when you need it. Sure. And then uh, other things like advanced delivery notifications, receiving, uh, and then that flows then on into the invoicing process, which can be the the kind of the um, bottleneck of of the process as well, getting those invoicing process as well. Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. if you have all those other pieces in place, it lends itself to a, to a better invoicing process. Sure. Because that tighter integration, maybe then particularly at the catalog level, but then your invoices will flow through and match mm-hmm. more quickly because you have that, mm-hmm. that precise uh, integration. Sure, um, sure, and that kind of I guess an easier flow the whole way from. From initial requisition through to purchase order management and then into account payable, effectively the whole kind of cure to pay cycle, right? Absolutely, yeah. You get you get your stuff procurement role in this is getting uh, getting all the stuff done up front, which mm-hmm. then leads to uh, everything flowing that much easier further down the channel as opposed sure. to just things backing up down at the end of the channel because stuff wasn't set up at yep. the start of the process. Yeah, makes sense, absolutely. Um okay. Um on to on to number three, and I guess you know. Mobility is is one of those um, uh, concepts that's going to come up in almost all these type of presentations in terms of trends yeah. to watch out for. But it, it is something you know that is is really is genuinely taking place in in, in uh, enterprise organisations. And we're seeing the the research from Cisco: that smartphones will account for 33% of total IP traffic, um, up from 13% in 2016, um, and a large part of that will be business related. Um, and then you know 90% of large organisations globally. Uh, will offer app-enabled mobile work options. So this is the whole concept of mobile working um, and people expecting that the same level of I guess, usability that they have in their in their personal lives that using their smartphones for various applications and whatever they might be in their personal lives that they expect to have that same mobile usability in, in their work lives as well. Um, so I guess the, the question here really is how will this trend, the obvious trend of mobility impact uh, and manifest itself in, in the procurement um, in the procurement departments. I guess. Yeah, it's um, you make it very well. It's that that's just the convenience that we get from our smartphones in our in our private lives. You you now expect that in the business world, like I can yeah. order something online yeah. from my phone. Why can't I do it for, for business reasons? So an engineer in the field mm-hmm. where he needs to park quickly or needs to order something to, to support his work quickly should be able to do it. Uh, from a smartphone and tablet out in the field, you should be able to then, when they, when they arrive, be able to or get it approved online. His manager may well be out in the field or working from home or whatever. They should be able to, to take advantage of the, the, the functionality that's available out there in, in the solutions that are out there now. Uh, and really, it's just been able to, it's pushing out that functionality out to, to, to the mobile devices from a receiving, requesting, approval point of view. Mm-hmm. And then you can have just visibility. I might mean, see when is something going to arrive. I can I can see from my smartphone by mm-hmm. looking, looking up my order that the supplier has confirmed, and I know that part that I need urgently is going to be with me this afternoon because yep. the supplier has confirmed it. Yeah, it's a it, it puts up a challenge to the procurement department, the technology providers, and their suppliers to, to support that. But it's, it's eminently sure. doable with the the, the platforms mm-hmm. and technology out there. So. Absolutely, yeah, and, and worthwhile, I'm sure, given the the benefits that can be uh, can be achieved. Uh, absolutely, and certainly for, for for particular businesses where you have people out in the field or the, the mobile workforce, etc. It's really it's starting to become a competitive must. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, great. Um, again, on to another trend, I guess that is impacting all areas of work, really. But you know, we want to focus in again on uh, how it is impacting the area of German. Um, you know, analytics, big data and analytics is is going to enable procurement to make more educated decisions across the supply chain, and um, and to I guess to be to be more more informed. So rather than you know maybe operating off a, a kind of a gut feel or off you know conversations here and there in terms of you know suppliers and that that we're actually operating off off real data and 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 kind of data that we've analysed. So I guess um, you know what what do you see? Carried as the big potential wins for procurement in, in leveraging big data. Yeah, um, I think a lot of if you're getting some of the other points right that we've talked about, automating procurement mm-hmm. and your you're starting to capture a lot more data, and you're opening up your systems to, to 
to be able to pull data from multiple sources, yeah, mm. you're you're now able to start and collect your your as a as a matter of course in your business process, you're collecting more data that allows you to start to analyze things like supplier pricing, comparative pricing. Mm. Now that you have your the data available, you can start to m manage your, or monitor your your supplier's performance, mm. delivery performance, mm. price. Mm. Uh, Price maintenance versus in terms of what they're they're, they're saying they're going to bill and what they actually end up billing at the end of the process. Mm. Uh, analyzing activity within your own business, what's been spent mm. through the profit channels, what mm. average spending is still taking place, or it will still mm. take place, and mm. now you can start to analyze who and where and what is happening, and, and monitor real time metrics like your suppliers' performance. So it's a, it's a there's a whole myriad of different areas you can start to analyze. Again, it's typically on the basis of having a number of other pieces in place, yeah. but the power that it gives you then is to make much better performed, better informed operational decisions and then strategic decisions as well. Sure. To, to where you want to go with your from a procurement point of view. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose analyzing kind of historic trends to try and make make predictions and, uh, and look at you yeah, know, exactly strategic decisions going forward. Yeah, anticipate, give you better 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 support of what may be a hunch as to where. Mm. Uh, where certain trends are leading you that you now have the data. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, sounds good. Um, and then moving on to, to number five. Um, so I guess for, from, from talking to, to lots of procurement people, we're, we're hearing um, that they're, they're really one of the key goals is to elevate their position, the position of the department um, uh, from, you know, that of maybe a gatekeeper to that of a trusted advisor. Um, and to, you know, obviously we're, we're looking at things like, you know, reduce and avoid purchase costs, of course, and improve procurement business agility, you know, absolutely. So these are things that have, you know, existed for a long time, but, you know, one of the, one of those key priorities now is we, we want to maybe change the, the way procurement is viewed and, and, and to elevate its position. So I guess, you know, maybe for, for the people, um, uh, listening in today, what, what do you think is required, um, within organizations for this shift? To take place in procurement. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it kind of goes back to the perception of a lot of procurement departments. Is often they're the kind of the the blocker on both sides. They, they mm. rightly or wrongly, I mean, it's, it's their job to get the best price and the best product for for the business. But it's often from a, an internal person trying to, to acquire something. It can be seen that they're 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 uh, the, the gatekeeper mm. of that process, and from a supplier trying to sell something, they're, they're the, the gatekeeper, and, and the, the reputation they can be the ones that are in the old, uh, by the old um, standards, where the ones who just beat up suppliers right. for the, the best price. And right. the stereotypical view of yeah, exactly, and that still has a, a place in it. It's still a, a necessary function of them, but it can be done. You can achieve the same results in different ways. It tends to be. The best practice organizations that I, I've seen out there tend to work cooperatively with uh, preferred suppliers. That they're they're building long term relationships, not not at the mm -hmm. not to sacrifice cost because that's still going to catch up with if you're not getting a good efficient yeah. price. But it should be on a long term mm -hmm. a long term gain for both you and your supplier. Um, yeah. The attitude is the change in attitude is that you're trying to become a facilitator for your business, help match up your business. Users who have particular needs with mm -hmm. the best suppliers that you mm -hmm. uh, you've acquired for your business. Sure. Make mm -hmm. that process as seamless and as efficient. That doesn't mean saying yes all the time, but it mm -hmm. means letting your users make the best choices, supported by the best validation processes yeah. before they go buying something. Yeah. And um, so that, that that's I think there's a shift in in the mm. that that role and how that role is perceived and how you how you you, you act as a as a member of the procurement team. Mm. Uh, and to support that, there's learning and development. I think from speaking mm. to a number of procurement managers over the last few years, there's probably been a, a lack of investment in, in training yeah. of them in terms of being able to take advantage of new processes, technologies, business mm. methods, and mm. an opportunity now to, to reinvest in procurement, uh, the procurement profession, if you like, mm. uh, within, your, within your business. And that then will allow them to be better place to take be aware and take better advantage of the technology that are out there. The ones we yeah. talked about there, mm -hmm. the ones that are always coming down the, the road yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to help them put in place the best system and processes and uh, uh, and approach uh, that supports their business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. No. That, that sounds like I guess um, the these 
I think all, like a change in attitude really has happened first, right? In terms of yeah, to, to then enable the learning and development and to get the kind of business buy-in for that. Um, as you said, like probably from uh, the economic situation point of view, there was maybe a lack of investment in procurement from a technology perspective and from a learning development perspective over the last few years. So that change in attitude needs to needs to come. I think there now, yeah, people are coming back to seeing it as a as a way of. It gaining competitive uh, cost advantage. Mm-hmm. If they do, it is money well spent. If you're doing it well, spending yeah. it wisely, yeah. training the right people, but giving them the, the mm-hmm. training to to, mm-hmm. to affect, first of all, that attitude change and mm-hmm. the, then the, the perception and the, the, the role of, of procurement in yeah. the organization. Okay, right. thanks for that, um, So I guess just to, maybe to sum up, as we are, we're coming up near time, um, the, the priorities, that, as I said, that we've highlighted that, that best practice organizations are pro- focusing on in 2018 are that supplier interaction and data management, and we talked a bit about onboarding and, and interacting with suppliers more efficiently, and purchasing process automation, always going to be a real you know, key part, and there's always efficiencies and, and benefits to be gained um, in, in improving that purchasing process. Um, mobility, how it's going to affect procurement and, and, and the, the benefits that can be gained by procurement through mobility. Big data and analytics and the, the insights that can be garnered from, you know, if, if we're automating these processes and, get, and gathering all this data, how can we mine that data and, and find the insights that can really help the business? Um, and in terms of that helping the business, I guess, you know, to, to become that trusted advisor, to become, to get a seat at the, the table in terms of strategic and, you know, we see that the chief procurement officer role becoming more, more prevalent as well, where, you know, that the procurement is, is playing a really strategic role at, at board level and at senior level in, in large organizations. Um, so, yeah, I guess um, just uh, on that note, maybe uh, we we might take a, a question or two. And also, you know, if, if you don't want to ask questions here in, in the webinar, we can we can always um, take questions by email. So if you want to, uh, if you want to um, take down our email addresses there, you can uh, send, you can contact either Gardner and we'd we'll be happy to, to get back to you. Um, so one question there, Gard, um, from one of our uh, from one of our listeners is just, um, I guess this this probably has, has appeared maybe a bit overwhelming by the looks of it, but you know where where would I start? So you know I'm I'm in a, a procurement uh, uh, department that may not have that kind of uh, trusted advisor role, and and it's a little bit manual and, and hasn't really got you know this seems like all kind of pipe dream stuff. So what, what's the first step? Where would you start? I think it's Assessing where the it's kind of taking the low lowest hanging fruit. Whether if you don't have a proper procurement process automation in place, that's maybe mm-hmm. where you start to look. Mm-hmm. And then once you get your your internal processes in place, uh, you can start to look out towards onboarding and the, the big data and analytics, and hopefully the procurement process will include mobility as well. But what it tends to keep coming back to is an open mind to, to adopting technology to, in support. I think the common thread through mm. almost all of those is uh, staying current with the technology that mm. the uh, procurement mm. departments need to, to keep up to date with what's available sure. right there. Sure. Um, and and let the get the gain the efficiencies that that can give them. Mm. It's not as simple as just implementing technology. You need to do it in a considered way and make sure it's cognizant of your specific business needs and there's a change management process often involved, which can get overlooked as well. Absolutely. But yeah, um, you don't want to just hoist changes on users and not kind of do the whole socializing beforehand and make sure everyone understands why exactly. this is happening. And, exactly. Yeah. So you want to make sure it's it's done in a in a considered way and, and communicated properly, but and with the right technologies and done in you got to not just it's not just your internal audience; it obviously affects your suppliers as well. So sure. Sure. That's done right. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, this, uh, some great insights there, Gard. Really, thank you very much uh, for that, um, and thank you all for for joining us today to listen in. We're we're just up at at the half hour, so um, we we will leave it there. As I said, if any of you want to um, get in touch, please do. We'd be happy to answer any questions um, or to open up any discussions that you you think we might be able to help with. And uh, we hope to see you on another webinar soon. Again, thank you very much.